Hello and welcome to the next episode of Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Rob Klingberg, your host. Today I have some good news, so let's move right along. Welcome back. Um, the good news is I've, we've finally completed a usable D-tube for one of the main wing panels. Uh, and as you may recall, these D-tubes are 18 and a half feet long, uh, and it has been a challenge to make them using processes that would be amenable to home building. Uh, we do have a process that uh, works. We were able to produce a uh, usable part, but I still wouldn't recommend it for a home builder. Uh, making these molds is uh, challenging enough, and then making the part doubly challenging. Uh, and I'm beginning to think that unless we come up with a different process of molding them, uh, it's really best done as a factory part. But in, in the meantime, why don't we take a look at what I got and, and see what uh, we might be able to learn along the way. So we uh, actually did the molding process very unusual way. We used the, the vacuum bag material here, the stretch along, as the uh, material that formed the surface of the D-tube. Uh, so the surface of the D-tube is rough uh, or a little bit bumpy uh, at the same level that this plastic has roughness on it, plus the weave of the fabric that's there. Uh, it's not like the Mylar where it's absolutely smooth. Uh, it did uh, produce uh, interesting results. Uh, as you saw in the other video, I'll provide a link in the description below. Uh, I'm going to sand and fill the surface, uh, and it actually saves a little bit of weight because I'm sanding some of the material off. Uh, and I might be doing that here. Uh, for this one, th this surface actually came out better than the uh, panel sample. Uh, the smoothness, smoothness of the surface is uh, superior to that test panel. Uh, and it might be a case where I'd come in and I'd just uh, fill uh, uh, not, excuse me, not Phil, where I just sand the surface. Uh, one of my uh, viewers wrote in and said, hey, maybe you could just sand it smooth enough without really uh, damaging any of the fabric. Maybe there's enough resin there to do that. And this is smooth enough, it might be true. Uh, at, at first I told him no, that uh, it's, it's not that smooth and I'd have to sand too much, but it might work in this case. Uh, and we're about to see, uh, I'll find out in the next couple of days. Right now the epoxy, we use a very long cure epoxy and this is still just a little bit rubbery. Take a couple of days so it's nice and rock hard, uh, easy to sand that way. So that's one thing that came out of this. Uh, the other thing is, is that we <laughs> forgot to put the darn uh, carbon fiber on the leading edge underneath the fiberglass. There's some three ounce 120 cloth fiberglass here and this is some unidirectional uh, carbon fiber up here and the fiberglass is meant to go over the outside of that and be nice and smooth. Uh, we forgot it the last minute we added it on and uh, so I'm going to have to do some extra filling here. Uh, this carbon fiber is actually 11 ounce uh, per square yard. It's supposed to be 5.6 uh, and some stupid fool in shipping and receiving accepted delivery of it when he shouldn't have. wonder who might have made that mistake. Uh, so this one's a little bit heavy, a little bit thick, but I will be able to sand it uh, smooth and uh, fill in the little bump here because that material is fairly thick. The weight difference isn't much, a couple ounces, maybe three at the most. Uh, I know normally I would uh, bleed over three ounces, but in this case, I didn't have any other material on hand. We had to use it. Uh, the other uh, D-tube, I'll make sure I have the right carbon fiber. So, and we tested the uh, stretch along up front to see which side was smoother and have more tendency to release. There's no release spray used on this at all. It's just the plastic itself. I have discovered that if you were to use the other side of the stretch line, it can get pretty much glued to the epoxy. So you have to check it with a, a little felt tip marker and see which side beads up. The side that beads up a little bit with the marker, uh, that's the side that'll release nicely, and that's what's on here. And I've put a little slit along the top uh, so that I can do this. You see, it's, it just comes off of here very easily. Uh, very easy to remove. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and uh, there's no uh, breather material that's in here. We thought at first we might put some uh, uh, just paper towel down along here so that it could suck air all the way down to the uh, vacuum pickups that are at either end. Uh, 
Uh, and it turned out to not be necessary. There's enough air passages. Uh, I suspect some of the air gets pulled through the surface of the foam. Uh, and it worked out fine without it. And it would have just been extra trouble. Uh, so no real need for uh, a, a breather line along there. And uh, the pucks, we use the standard vacuum pucks. And they're at the end and they just... Uh, they're buttered up against the mold itself. It doesn't actually touch the part. Now, the vacuum bag itself, we had laid that out flat on the table and we left a lot of extra on the other side, a little bit here. The little bit that was hanging over here, I put the putty on, uh, the ceiling putty, and we came and took the extra material from the other side. We wrapped it, we, we pulled it up on the other side, working from the other side, and smoothed it out with a squeegee, went over the top, and then smoothed it out down this side. Sounded like a good plan, but we spent a lot of time trying to get those little tiny wrinkles out of the bag, as many of them as we could. Um, and in the middle of it, Bob said, hey, you know, why don't we come from each side and then seam it in the middle? And I've tried to seam this stretch along stuff before, and it can be difficult, uh, and that would have required extra putty down the top. Uh, we could have used tape, but it really to get them to seal, you have to use the putty, and that's 18 and a half feet of putty. It's quite a bit of it. Um, so we did it this way. I, I wouldn't recommend it again. If you had something like this, if you're trying something like this, I'd recommend either that you uh, wrap down this way and seal it to the table if you can do that, or if you're going to do this proce process, I would have a sheet across the bottom with extra on both sides. Bring it up and, and trim it and seal it across the top, and I think we would have gotten a better result. We had fewer wrinkles in it. Now, unfortunately, I can't really show you the wrinkles here. They are uh, very, very small, but there, there are many spots, probably literally hundreds of them, where there were very, very fine wrinkles in uh, the stretch line material. Fortunately, it did not wrinkle the fabric. The fabric is flat uh, to the foam. Uh, so the wrinkles, within the wrinkles, it's just resin filled in that spot. So I'll just be able to go back and sand down that resin, and it won't be any problem. Just a little bit of extra prep work on the surface, uh, but it had no impact on the structural quality of the part. Uh, so that worked out okay. Uh, you wouldn't want any more wrinkles than we got in this one. The bottom is quite smooth. Uh, the top has uh, a fair number of wrinkles in it, and I'll just have to sand those down. Uh, I won't have to do any filling. I'll be able to just uh, sand them flat. I'll probably go down to 220 and then may, maybe take some 600 grit wet and uh, finish them off nice that way. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you about this? You see that the balsa edge is down here. That's the end of the part. And this will get cut approximately in half here when I size it to match the, uh, the spar itself. Uh, and anything else? So it's on the mold right now with the peel ply underneath from the original interior molding. And I'm going to leave it right on the mold until I have all of the surface finishing done on this part. Then I'll pull it off. Uh, I'll put some protective material on it, just some butcher paper wrapped around it to protect it, and then I will bond it uh, to the spar. Uh, and the good news is, when this gets bonded to the spar, and when the other one gets bonded to the spar, I can then assemble the entire aircraft for the first time. I'll be able, I have the center section, the pilot's cage, the tip panels, the winglets, the winglet mounts, We've got all the components, and we'll actually be able to uh, put the main wing panels on the center section, put the wing tips on and the winglets, pilot's cage, and I'll actually be able to pick it up and, and we'll see how it kind of handles on the ground. Now, the aft portion of the wing will not be there at that point. That's okay uh, because I'll be able to estimate the weight and balance from what I have. But it will give us a chance to actually assemble the thing, see how it all goes together, see how long it takes, and uh, that'll be an exciting day. And that's coming up. That'll probably come up in about a month, month and a half. Finally, the last thing that I can tell you is uh, something about the foam. Uh, this is the Airx foam. Uh, this is, the yellow stuff is uh, 60 kilograms per cubic meter or 3 and 3 quarter pounds per cubic foot. Uh, the green stuff is 80 kilograms per cubic meter or 5 pounds per cubic foot. Um, and obviously I use this on the inner portions. And back in the corner back there you can see that the yellow stuff is out at the tip. Uh, and that was to save a little bit of weight. You know, there's... Uh, uh, one and a quarter pounds per cubic foot difference, uh, so it saves a few ounces. Well, it turns out saving those few ounces is uh, a fool's errand. Uh, the cell structure, to make this lighter, they have the cell structure is larger on this foam, and it was harder to get the uh, fiberglass to attach 
firmly to this foam. I was a little bit of worried about it. Uh, it didn't look like it was really had enough resin or hearing well, so we added a little bit of extra resin. Got good adhesion, but we're probably back to the way it would have been with just using the green foam. It would have been simpler to just order one type of foam and bond all that together. So uh, saving an ounce or two by going with lighter foam, not worth it. This has got a nice fine structure on it, and the fiberglass adheres, adheres to it nicely. Well, that's about all for now. And uh, when I have the part off of here, I'll bring you back. In the meantime, if you like a hat, go down, look in the description, find out how you can get one. Uh, or if you want to get the uh, X-Plane simulator, uh, there's some information down there how you can do that also. And if you have a mind to, if you're really loving the stuff, uh, I'd, it'd be great if you were a Patreon uh, member. And if you stay a Patreon member from now until my first flight, you get your name on the wing. What's cooler than that? So until then... Uh, fly safe and bye for now.